Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scene tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Lance Psycho, welcome back to me inside the firm because I was outside the firm at the International Builders Show. You were. You had a ball. There's a 20-minute uh, breakdown that Al does on, I believe, episode 145. Jason and, and Mr. Jason and Al went to a, uh, a lecture that was from a, an economist, and it's so good that I'm going to cut it over the weekend, and we're going to unveil a, a special 20-minute episode on Wednesday, and it's going to be, be called the, Econ- uh, the Economic Forecast for 2020, something like that. Um, but I, th- I recommend that everybody listen to it because I think it was such a, they did such a good job about breaking down the numbers and, and sort of, you know, w- what the projection rate of growth is going to be. But why also, it's going to be th- why it's going to be that why exactly why it's going to be that was really interesting about how you were talking about how the labor is not getting better but that's okay but then there's this demand for all of these houses so it pinches it and pinches it in a good way such that it seems like we're not going to have this giant bubble i really like the idea that there's not this giant bubble coming mm-hmm. anymore so uh look for that or look for the one that lance is going to cut it's probably going to only be 20 minutes long or something like that yeah but, yeah but if you have anything to do with the economy, you should listen to that one. Um, if you haven't, already. let's say you have a job, you might, <laughs> exactly. want, to listen, you might want to listen to that. Uh, so, speaking of uh, the economy and saving money, inside the firm members can save up to forty-five percent off during Dell's quarterly business sale. The sale is now; it's only till two-two, so you have like four days left, three days left, something like that. So, if you were going to buy something, you need to visit Dell.com forward slash inside the firm to receive your coupon because you have to be a cool member via through us to get this sort of deal dell.com forward slash inside the firm to receive your coupon and i know you have the time to do that especially if you're using arcat because you're saving time right uh instead of doing what a lot of professionals dread you know editing down a manufacturer specification you're staring down a 54 page specification and you only want one product and all of its attributes there's a better way, and it's not throwing the entire specification into your project documents. It's RCAT Spec Wizard. Spec Wizard, is, Spec Wizard is a patented, one of a kind, automated spec writing tool that allows you to specify a product in minutes, not hours. Just select the products and options you want to specify and generate a three part CSI spec in your choice of formats. Best of all, it's free, F-R-E-E, and requires no registration. So go to arcat.com, A-R-C-A-T.com, and start building better content today. What was the best part of IBS International Builder Show, you asked, Lance? That's what I asked him. Um, Besides the cool lectures and all the cool products, honestly, when you were just in Vegas, New York, New York. New York, New York. Have you went into that one? So I got a pizza at night, and I don't drink that. I don't drink really. Mm-hmm. So I had a couple of beers, and then listening to like dueling pianos with a pizza in New York. New Fun York times was awesome. Yeah, just had to shout that out. Too. That was the best part, New York, New York. It probably wasn't the best part, but it was a very. Relaxing I think the best part of Vegas is the Venetian, but that's me. The Venetian. Yeah. Have you been into uh, Encore? And what's the one? God, what's it? the win? Have you been into the win? Yes. What you, that pretty posh, pretty posh, too posh, a little bit. So the Venetian is like the right amount of posh. Yes, I it's just like posh. how that because you've been to Italy and I like New York because I've been to New York because I used to live there. Yeah, and you the Venetian li- feels like dusk, and I appreciate that. Mm. They figured out how to f- make it feel like dusk. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. So uh, if you're really hung over at noon. <laughs> it's not noon. It's like six. So this is go, uh, go have some Bloody Marys at Venetian. That's what I did. I was gonna say this must have happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went over New Year's. Um, so I want to talk about one. The first thing I would like to talk to you about today, Mr. Alex, and everybody else, obviously, is uh, bailing people out. Mm. Uh, so we get these calls 
um, more often than I than I think maybe a lot of other people do. I don't know. Maybe, maybe more people. I would love to hear some some stories from people if they do encounter this. But we recently got a a phone call from or it was a contact through Thumbtack, and uh, it was pretty. It was a pretty astounding phone call. Once I had the phone call with with the gal, and it was she she had no idea that she had to go through and get an engineer and get an architect for this project of hers okay let's call it a yogurt shop it's it's it, it's not a yogurt shop but she calls me and she says it's been my my life has been a nightmare for a while <laughs> <laughs> I go, pretty strong and I go, i'm sorry i'm sorry to hear that uh, i was very empathetic and just kind and listening to her she originally said she had five thousand dollars to get this project done and i said um so when she was ta- she telling me what happened was basically you know, she thought she was doing the right thing. And um, she, she went down to the city. She asked them what she has to do to open up this, you know, they're going to they're gonna do some interior remodeling in this commercial space. They want to open up this shop. She thought she was following all the rules. And she even got through building inspection, fire inspection. The only one that threw a red flag at her was the health inspection. Hmm. Because when, we went, when she went to go get went to go do the health inspection when they went and looked at it she was missing two sinks and they go and they asked her for the plans and she says what plans so building inspection to get she got the billion she said she had the ice cream there ready to go <laughs> it was pretty crazy it to was open up crazy. shop yeah yeah or not yeah. the ice cream but the the yogurt right that's 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 the the fictional uh business type that i'm talking about yeah um so yeah she had all of these products ready to go right I was just devastated because she was like, I thought we were going to open up. Yeah. So the reason I'm telling this story is twofold. Number one, I think, I think, um, if, if, in, for instance, in, in Colorado, there's uh, a lot of people, um, there's a, there's a lot of people that are trying to open up businesses because the economy is so good. And I think a lot of people are not ready for the amount of red tape that people have to go through these days. And so the sooner, the, the more I think you can educate your clients and be empathetic to them if they come to you and they're in these kinds of pickles, I, I think it's completely valid. I don't think you try to make them feel stupid. I think it's because I think, because once we, especially we signed the contract and had the meeting with this person, it was, it was clear to me like, oh, you did actually try to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. Holy cow. Did you guys try to do the right thing? Um, they weren't trying to do, pull, pull any fast corners or anything like that, cut any corners or, or anything like that. And then the second thing we did was, is I think a lot of people would steer away from a project like this. I think there's some karma that can come back to you by helping people out. Maybe you're not going to make as much money as you would on a different project, but there, but there's something to that of just sort of bailing people out, right? So her original idea was, hey, I only have $5,000 to do it. Well, I talked to my engineer and he says, ah, I need X amount of dollars to get this done. And then I, you know, did the calculations in my head and I'm like, wow, we're probably double that number mm-hmm. thinking, it, you know, and engineer said, yeah, it's probably a long shot that they're going to do it. They're probably just going to f- fold the cards and everything. And I said, well, I'll, I'll, how about this? I'll send an email out and I will explain our hesitations with allowing ourselves to get roped into this very low fee and just trying to take a look at the existing space, write some letters, maybe a sketch or two, and just try to, and just try to have some sim- get some sympathy from the building department who's already too busy, right? Right, right. So I explained that in a very nice email, and then uh, brought up the I brought up the fact that our fear is you're going to have a snowball effect. We're going to submit something. The building department's going to come back. They're going to ask for more. Then they're going to keep asking for more, and then eventually they're going to ask for full blown drawings. Right. Yes. So I said, that's our fear. If we go down that route, I think you'll end up spending double the five thousand. Here's here is where we would normally be, and I gave her a different number. Yeah. Here's where we would normally be for a project like that. Think it'll if that sounds reasonable, you know, let me know and I'll write up a contract. And she said she thought it over the weekend. We're we'll back on Mondays this last week, and said I I think I think we should do it the right way. Yep. So we did. So and then we ended up getting the original contract for what we should get it for anyway. And going down there and meeting and everything, so I, I'm, I wouldn't I wouldn't run away from situations like that. I think honesty and really explaining the snowball effect 
is, right. is how you got to do it. And if they won't, if they don't buy it, don't then don't go don't go into the snowball effect. Don't allow yourself to be the snowball. So so you're saying if they don't b- believe your logic that there could be the snowball effect, then you're like then okay, you're like no, this is not the project for me. Yeah, because that snowball effect happens so often. Yeah, and 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 it it happened with this with one of the clients that I'm dealing with. Um, it's a, a house addition and the owner tried to do it, you know, step by step. And obviously they get terms wrong. That's fine. Um, they did, they did something. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> they call it an illegal build. She's like, why don't you like, that's too harsh. Call it an undocumented build. <laughs> I was like, that is hilarious. <laughs> no, <I'm> like, <laughs> How politically correct. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> but finally they said like, you need to just go get an architect. And this is such a small project and there's like, all we're doing is adding some doors, calculating some areas, stuff like that. And to me, it's like, man, our, our fees are, it's not that it's too much, but it's, ah, oh, shouldn't it have to go down this route? And it had to go down that route because of, if you would have maybe called me from the beginning, we would have got this done. Exactly. Exactly. So if everybody, if people can find me on LinkedIn, if you just, if you just go to, if you just go to, um, uh, LinkedIn and then type in, I think it's linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Lance psycho. You can find me. And if you go to my profile, you'll see, I wrote two articles. I wrote two articles in the last week. One of them was about this and it was titled stop cutting out corners and professionals because it will cost you more in the end when you build it take a look, take a look, read it. Let me know what you think. R- write to me or, or comment if, if you find it interesting or not, or if you disagree. But I, but I try to lay out the case for exactly what Alex is saying too, is that I, I just don't be afraid to ask these professionals because it's just going to cost you more. I promise you it's going to cost you. And how much, like how much how valuable is your time, right? Think about if you, if you, if you would end up like this gal did where you have, you know, uh, tens, uh, hundreds or not tens of thousands, but thousands and thousands of product, you have ready to go. You think you're ready to you're ready to make this happen and start selling and, and making money again, and then all of a sudden you're like, nope, nope. You need like back to square one, back to way square one. Yeah. So that's that. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about today, Al, is I uh, I hacked Thumbtack. Ooh, I like this. It's super exciting. Re- remember, remember when everyone would say like, yeah, that that term biohack. Money, you know, all these little hacks. Life hack. Life hack. There you go. So how did you thumbtack hack? So I have been on a, uh, a mission to try to become, a, you know, keep, to keep improving salesmanship, right? And so um, one thing that I checked is I started going through, I've been, I've been on top, of, I started a spreadsheet finally. And it's got, okay, how did they, con- how did they get a hold of me? How did they find us? What t- project type is it? Who is the client's name? What is their email? What is their phone number? When did they first contact us? When did I first contact them? First meeting, follow-up date, second follow-up date, proposal date, all of, all of that, right? Yeah. And then coupled with that, then when I go to my Thumbtack interface, I started finally getting frustrated about like, wow, I respond to these people so quickly. And there's things I love about Thumbtack, but there's things I that's really bug, bug the crap out of me. And one of them is, as I feel like when somebody contacts us, they should have to give us their phone number. Like part of the form should have to be like, you have to fill out their phone number or you have to fill out your email because, but I get, I, you know, I, I understand that Thumbtack is like, oh, I want you to stay in the Thumbtack, in the Thumbtack. But the, but the thing is, is I, as a professional, I'm paying for these leads. So I don't understand why that couldn't be part of the deal, right? Because I'm still paying for the lead. Mm -hmm. So if I click and say, accept the lead. And they and one of their requirements is to give me the email or the phone. It, they still get paid. Like what, what's what's the problem here, right? Yeah. So I started getting frustrating. I started getting frustrated. Started <laughs> getting frustrated at the end at the end of uh, last week, or sorry, at the beginning of this week. And I was like, what happens if I, like, if I if I if they never talk to me, right? So I'm yep. They contact they contact me. I contact them. You know, set up a meeting, send them a link, whatever, and they never contact me. And I was like, I should get my money back. I should get my money back. So I started going to my messages. And what you can do is, and I, I recommend everybody try this. I don't think there's anything wrong with it because it's been working. So for instance, one person did not get back to me uh, 
like for a week tried them again there's three little buttons right on the top and you can you can you can click on it and you can say report and the beautiful thing about that is so if I say report then I can say I'm having uh, what well, they they bring they, a little pop-up comes up and it says what was the issue and it says and then I can choose whatever and what I what I've been saying is I say cost of lead and then I click that and then I click continue and then I can say uh, other reason and then they give you an option to type something in right so what I type in is I say this person because it in it and obviously like it has to be the truth so this person never got back to me so so shouldn't I get my money back well and it is because it's a hundred percent of the time for the last ten times I've done it it's amazing because it's not really a lead not at all they don't get back to you yep. like yep and because, then, because the thing of some tech is oh here's a client to talk with yep and you can't even yep it's like giving you uh, a phone number and it always goes to voicemail always goes to way. voicemail yeah exactly exactly so I'm looking on, uh, so I have this, if, if you go to your Thumbtack, if you're on it and you go to thumbtack.com forward slash profile forward slash payments forward slash pending, then it shows all of your refunds and I've got refund after refund after refund after refund after refund after refund. Yep. So we're not wasting any money anymore. Yeah. So use that, use that hack. And, I, and then here's one more, here's one more I'll give. This isn't a hack, this is just a tip, but it's worked three times in a row this week. And yesterday, yesterday I got two house leads and one an in-person meeting on brand new house and uh what it was was you know they said they're going to build a new house and it was two sentences I, I, all of a sudden like some reason two sentences is working thanks for contacting me about your possible new home yep i would love to speak with you a little bit more uh about it what is your number i can't believe it's just like th two or three sentences but it's been the same one over and over again so maybe it's just me maybe it's where we're at i have no idea yeah but those are some little tips. Cool, 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 cool. So you brought up a nice concept um, that you wrote about, and it was hourly versus lump sum. Uh, basically, what should contracts be? Should you s charge a lump sum or should you charge hourly? Uh, most of our contracts are lump sum besides our repeating clients. A lot of our repeating clients, they just trust us and it's just they just tell us to do something, we do it and we bill it for them. And it's literally that just whatever time it takes us, right? So you did a comparison of, of an example of a project where you could have both ways. And do you kind of want to explain that? Yeah, exactly. So here's an, uh, uh, really, you should you check out this article. It's on, it's, I've actually posted it a couple of places. I posted it in the Entrecture community. I posted it um, in the uh, Business of Architecture, that, that Facebook group. And then I posted it on LinkedIn. And so the article is titled, Should I Be Charging Hourly or Fixed Fees? for my services. And the reason I wrote this one is because uh, I was in a, it was in a discussion in the Entree Architect community. And it was interesting. It was actually Adam Mayberry asked the question if he should, uh, are, do people, he, he's interested in trying, should I charge a flat rate per each sheet that I produce? Something like that. And then what I ended up asking him with just a very simple question was, and it, it started a whole other sub thread. And the, the question was, well, why don't you just execute this project on an hourly basis with a not to exceed fee? And everybody has their opinions, right? But what in in my in the discussion, I ended up bringing up this just a theoretical idea. And the theoretical idea was, what if you basically, what if you what if you were charging a fixed fee of twenty five thousand dollars, and it took you five hundred hours, and that's what you convinced the client. That you were going to do, but they, but they, and then the next client, very similar, came to you and they say, uh, "Well, I just don't trust that it's a, that the fixed fee should be that high." You know, I think you're gouging me with this. So, what if you instead convince them, this new client, to do a not to exceed fee of fifty thousand on an hourly basis, and you and you took another five hundred hours, and the math basically comes down to if I did the math in the article. It comes down to um, $37,500. Yeah. So you actually made more money. But they, then they, the further interesting thing about that subthread was then uh, two, Adam and another guy jumped in and they go like, well, that doesn't, that doesn't work for us because uh, the, the hourly thing, right? Because we're single practitioners. 
Like we we're not, we aren't a machine like F9. So we don't have people working, you know, you don't multiply that factor and that manpower, right? Where but I don't see why it still doesn't work. Yeah, be go ahead. Yeah. Because because my logic would be if you do a fixed fee, if you ever exceed the amount of hours on a fixed feed, you're losing money. Right? Right. But if you do an hourly, the only issue with that scenario is that and and it's just a setup, but like the premise is still the same. If they said, oh, it's too high, you know, like how are you going to convince them to do and not to exceed that's even higher than what your fixed fee was, right? So I think a lot of us always start with a lump, lump fee, but I think the root of what you're bringing up is that when you do an hourly, the profit is already baked, baked in. in. It's baked into the cake. It's, yes, exactly. That's it, exactly it. Yep, yep. So then you aren't getting squeezed because um, sometimes architects like to design more and, and just kind of eat it more. Sometimes uh, we underestimate our time. Um, so if you can ever build that trust and go to an hourly, your profit will be healthier because it's it's automatically baked in there, right? Because there's all these formulas about how, you know, to figure out how much you should charge hourly or for a project, right? But the hourly is already kind of mathematically sound. And so then you have to time yourself. So get yourself a good timer. Timer is one of them. Uh, there's a couple other ones. Well, the way, and the way I kind of broke it down was to, to kind of explain how the, how the fees work, right? So I said, in, in this scenario, we, uh, we again take 500 hours to complete the project, but instead can bill out at $75 an hour, thus bringing our total fees to 37500 We next uh, need to pay our hired professional and our overhead associated with them, this is if we have an employee, to, give, to keep the comparison the same, let's use the $37.50 hour rate as our rate for which it costs to employ our professional per hour, right? And the way that broke down was, let's say we're paying them uh, $25 an hour, um, that's what they their net pay is per hour, their gross pay is per hour, and then there's all taxes and everything else. But then the seventeen fifty on top of that, or sorry, the twelve fifty on top of that is the health insurance, the insurance for the firm, all the you know computers, electricity, you name it, yep, right? Yep, yep. And then that's why you're doubling it because you're always supposed to have this two to two and a half to three, depending on how your how your numbers work and what your overhead is. That's why it's baked already into the cake. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I thought it was such a good idea that I, I, I tried an experiment right away so I could bring it to the clients. So I'm going after a house um, and I let them know because this is what happens in probably a lot of counties is that you don't know exactly what you can build because yeah. you have to get a ruling from the county. They have to do some investigation and that takes time on my part. So, hey, here's the whole contract for a larger mart amount. We can adjust it if we can't build as much as, as we say, but they were hesitant on that and you know thinking about it and stuff like that. So then I proposed, well, why don't we just do an hourly build against that until we can figure out you know what we can do? And they just haven't gotten back in me in time or else um, I would have said, hey, look at that. That's did you, you, did you get my psychology be, between being so extreme with the comparisons? With like, with, like let, let pretend that you... If you're the client, right? Yes. My idea is, okay, you, you're not buying 25000 Not going to buy it. Not going to buy it. Fine. Fine. Let's do hourly, but we're going to do a top set with 50000 Right. And then... I'd say that's crazy. Exactly. Uh, exactly. So then let's let's just settle for the for the fixed fee of twenty five grand. That's That was my psychology behind it was... Yeah. The, you, I'm, uncom I'm so uncomfortable with not doing fixed that if you want to do hourly, I'm going to double it. Yeah. Or it's a no deal. Yeah. So let's meet at 25K then and do fixed and it's all said and done. Yeah. And I don't know how the psychology works too because um, they're already not – in that scenario, maybe the client's not the right client because they're not trusting you on 25 even though this is your profession, this is what you do. Um, so why would they trust you to bill them hourly? You know, I, I – I honestly only think hourly comes into play is after you've done a project or two. Have you ever had a straight up hourly from the beginning besides probably Robert? No. Uh, yeah. Nope. I mean, right now, the, yeah, exactly. I mean, I can think of the exact client who's coming in on Monday. Like, no, we're hourly now because we just we've worked for a decade with you. Yep. We just do it. That's what we do. Yeah. 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 So we'll keep you posted 
um, if we switch more to hourly and how that works out. But uh, it was just an interesting thought, right? Well, can I go back to that, Al? Because yeah. he, he, he was actually so convinced by this article. I was kind of like taken back by it. I yeah. was honestly struck. I was like, he's like, I came into the office on Monday and he's like, I read your article. That was good. I was. Why are we doing hourly? <laughs> <laughs> like that wasn't the point. It was just a mental exercise. It was just to get people thinking. And it, yeah, so like to, to bring it back and sum it up then, it really was a mental exercise I don't think there's a one size fits all. There should never be a one size fits all. I was even talking with another person in the in the entree architect community just this morning and last night, uh, and the idea was the question the question came up. They, they actually there was a gal. She tagged me and she said, "What episode was it where you guys said um, how you should not just just check in, right? What, like what what should the language be when you're following up with the client?" Wow. Great thread, beautiful thread, and uh, one person chimed in and they said, "You always present." the proposal in person and I'm like no yeah. no not for everybody uh, it's just not i mean what if it's long distance honestly what if it is long distance because we've had uh cli- and maybe maybe that maybe that's maybe you don't maybe you are cutting yourself off from long distance clients we have done business out on both coasts um we're working with a, a firm that who a firm who actually listens to this podcast in mexico who wants to start will be the on ground people Heck, Bob, all the stuff we did with Robert Wygant, it was all remote. But but you also cut yourself off from smaller low uh, projects. Yeah. Because And maybe that's not your thing. Exactly. Just admit it then. It, but if you're doing 50, 100K you know, contracts for every one and that's your low, okay. But if you're doing a couple thousand little additions here, you'd just be driving around all the time, like handing out contracts. It doesn't make... This world is just not black and white. I mean, it, it, I mean, it makes me think even further. Great, good, good for, good for, good for you for get. Maybe you're that kind of architect who gets ten to twelve percent of construction costs, and you just are crushing it. And you do two houses a year, and it's your whole life in in terms of professionality. And you, every little detail is thought out. Uh, you, all the trim is exactly picked out. Like you, you're doing top to bottom. You know everything about this this house, right? Mm. What about the people who don't want that service? What about what about all the other people who uh, need an architect, but it's just like they need a they need a ramp in front of their house because their their mom is sick and they're moving her in, right? And she's got to get up and down. Like, don't those people deserve your serve the service too? Aren't we like aren't we supposed to be humanitarians? Mm. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> tangential. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, take a look at those two articles. Uh, Al will put them in the uh, show notes. Uh, absolutely, and then, um, uh, take a look at it. Last, I got to tell you a story. So I was flying back from the International Building Show, and some of my friends, uh, they actually own a business. It's it's business consulting, right? And they're down in Denver, and they say, hey, Al, meet us down in Denver. We haven't seen you in a while. So I said, okay, I'll come down, uh, hung out with them, and then these are these are girlfriends I've known for, you know, like since high school, right? And, and I sit down right next to one of them, and I go, hey, how's it going? And she, she almost like, she fakes like she's going to touch my butt. And I knew it wasn't anything, you know, she's like, that's what that guy just did to me. Ooh. And I go, I go, what? I go, yeah, he, you know, when I sat down, he, he grabbed my butt. I go, I go, are you okay? You know, like w- what's going on here? And they're like, yeah, we're, you know, we're here because of like these business, these business meetings, because they do this, this coaching. I go, I go, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, <that's weird. laughs> totally. And then, you know, we're talking about stuff and then they're telling me a story and they're like, yeah, we met them. Um, we actually met them here because they were, they were here for skiing like last year. Right. And then they were out dancing and one of the guys touched, I, I'm talking to the, the boss, one of her employees, butt, and had to take their hand off of it. And I go, are you kidding? Like, no, and I go, then why, why are you having dinner again you know with these guys and she goes well it's just it's just the boss that's the problem everyone else at the firm is is really really nice and they started you know kind of making excuses so i'm like okay i'm not here to judge or whatever um and i say well are you gonna keep doing business with them and they're like yeah i don't know you know waffling back and forth i go well if you are you as the boss have to like isolate that other boss from your employees because you can't have that happening like that's crossing the line like that's a clear a clear line 
And then we started discussing it and they're like, well, you know, if, if, uh, they are a very like lucrative client, a very lucrative client. And I go, I said, there's other lucrative clients. Like, yeah, I just can't stress that enough either. (laughs) Like there's just, it just, you have to, I don't know. It's so hard though, when you're starting out to get to that point, I, I, you can, and then how do you get that wisdom and that gusto in put into people who aren't there yet? Because it takes time. And, And I said, I said, be aware of that because that's the story that's as old as time is that the older man is going after the younger girl because he's experienced and has stuff and then he's, you know, taking advantage of it, right? And she she goes, yeah, but I don't know how to say no without, you know, like coming off as a jerk. And then like all three of us are talking at, at this point. So I point to one of the, the younger ones. I was like, have you ever been at a club? And they're like, yes. Have you ever been at a club and some guy wanted to dance with you and you didn't want to dance with him? Yeah, of course. I go, what do you do? They said some answer. <laughs> I go, so you've done it before. They're like, yeah, but this is different. And I go, now I understand. I go, it's because you haven't had experience in that. And yeah. then I told the story where when I was younger, um, some con- like contractors, you know, would be, they're big and tough and they'd yell at you and tell you what to do. And, and, and then one time, you know, this, this contractor was over the line, accused me of gouging and doing all this stuff. And I told him to F off. I told him like, I don't give a shit. And he was a big client and it didn't matter. Like, once you get experience in doing that, then, then it's fine. And that's all you need. And you don't have to like swear or do anything like that. I said, you could have told them like any excuse. You could have told them that you had a dinner with me <laughs> so that you couldn't go out with them. You know, like that happens all the time. So the, the only thing that I'm trying to get across in this is that, uh, and this is more of a, a female thing in this industry that might happen. And you might not know what to say right away because you're not expecting it. And, and, and that's okay. But know that it, it's not something like that's the, in this profession. You don't have to do that to, yeah. to work with people because I, because actually we've done some business together and I was like, how many times have I touched your guys's butt or your, I probably said guys instead of girls, but they knew who I was talking about. Yeah. Like never. I go, exactly. So, <laughs> You don't have to do it. Especially in this age. I just I don't, yeah, I mean, well, and the bigger point is, the bigger point is that that's applicable to everybody that we, that we touched on a little bit was there are just so many fish in the sea. And I know it's, I know it's hard to see that right away when you start a business and you're hungry and you're like, I need, or maybe, maybe you hit a slow spot and you've been going for a while. I don't know. I believe in the woo woo of the universe and that something's going to come your way. That's worthwhile. I, I just don't think you should ever put yourself in a position like that because it's never going to stop. I just don't see it ever stopping. Oh, I see it only as, you know, encouraging, right? Yep. And, and we established like not encouraging, just like, what is the word? Enabling. Enabling. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Um, but also, um, God, what was I going to say about that? I don't know. I don't know where else I was going to go. Oh, Mm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's Friday. It, it's late. Um, you don't have to. It, oh, this was going to get like we established it wasn't an accident. Like you could be dancing, you could bump into something or do something. You know, like nuances maybe need nuanced you know approaches. Uh, but something like this, like just don't don't be afraid to say no or hey. Uh, I'm sorry, we're not doing business together or just literally ghost. You can literally not get back to people, right? Because you're so busy and, and going on. And if they, they ever, ever call you out on it, like, hey, why didn't you get back to me? Be like, sorry, I've just, just been doing so much business. I just just kind of lost track of it. You know, like there's there's different approaches, but um, know that it it's not expected in this industry. It's not that game at you, all. Yeah. It's 2000, 2020. Yeah. We're good. Yep. We're good. Any any last words of advice, Al Gore, before we sign off for the weekend? Yes. If you are in this industry and want to learn Revit, go to RevitRocketShip.com, where yours truly trains you in Revit like we've trained hundreds and now at this point thousands of people of how to model what we think is correctly, intelligently in Revit. Guaranteed, uh, if you don't like it, your money back. So go ahead and check it out. 
Uh, my word of advice is we're actually I I went I'm going to try to look up on the uh, po- on the Apple Podcast right now to s- see where we're at as far as five star reviews. And for some reason it doesn't even tell us how many more how many we have. So maybe we're just past a number. I think we're probably at like well, eighty now or something like that. Can't I look on? You can't look on the app either. I'm telling you, you can't you can't even leave a review on the app anymore. I don't understand it. So what? while I would love for you to somehow for somebody to figure out how they can leave us a five star review, the other thing I would like I would encourage oh, every no we got eighty eighty perfect get us up to eighty five <laughs> 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 whoever whoever is number eighty five number eighty five they get a phone call with Al Al Gore and then ninety you get a phone call with with Lance then ninety five you get a phone call with Al then a hundred you get a phone call with Al and Lance wow that's the idea yep. Uh, but it'll really be better than your birthday. It's going to be the best. And it's me and Al's birthday month next month. So we would love to share our birthday month with you. Uh, the other thing is go to archetype, go to awards.archetizer.com. We are not being paid by them. I just encourage everybody to try it once to, so we just submitted two projects and archetizer into three different categories. We've won once before. It is an awesome experience. If you win, it is an awesome experience just to even um, understand how to write for yourself and how to explain your project in 300 words or less. It makes you go get it for, for, uh, photographed. And then if you do win, it's huge because you get the, you obviously get a, like a physical award, but you can tell people you're an award-winning firm and people want to hear that because they want to hire trusted professionals and you are a trusted professional if you're producing award-winning work. So with that, we'll see you next week. 